right, section 1.5 is on the four other trig functions. So you should have printed out um, this copy right here that I have in front of me. And this is kind of a table format of um, the sine and the cosine, which you already know from the unit circle. So all I did is make a chart out of it. So this first column is the arc length, and these are our common arcs, pi over 6, pi over 4, and you can see they go in order. And I'm just going to draw some lines here. So from here to here, this is quadrant 1, and then from there to there, we have quadrant 2, and up to 3 pi over 2, we have quadrant 3, and then quadrant 4, and so you can see that this is just in table format. Here's the sine column, and here's the cosine column. So the four new trig functions we're going to learn is the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. And we are going to learn these new four as, as um, derived from the sine and the cosine. So they're, they're going to be ratios of the sine and the cosine and various combinations of that. So let's first start with the tangent. And by definition, the tangent of an arc is defined as the sine of the arc over the cosine of the arc. So sometimes when we say tangent, we just say tangent is sine over cosine. So let's do an example. And we're going to fill out this chart as we do a few examples. So we want to calculate the tangent of pi over 4. Well, that is equal to the sine of pi over 4 divided by the cosine of pi over 4. And then we just fill those in. So the sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. And anything divided by itself is 1. So the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Now, let's use our knowledge of uh, the symmetry and what happens in the quadrants to be able to fill in some of this chart. So that was pi over 4. Now let's look at 3 pi over 4. So at 3 pi over 4, notice the cosine is negative. So just to change this, I would just be making that negative, and therefore that's negative. So the tangent then is negative 1. Now let's jump to quadrant 3, 5 pi over 4. Notice the sine is negative and the cosine is negative. So when you have a negative divided by a negative, you have a positive. So that's positive 1. And then let's jump to the fourth quadrant. You're probably getting the hang of it now. And now we've got the sine is negative, but the cosine is positive. Where's my pen? There we go. And so then this changes to negative. And so is negative 1. Okay. Um, let's do the cotangent next. So the cotangent has two definitions. It's the reciprocal of the tangent. So you could say that's 1 over the tangent of x. And since it's the reciprocal of the tangent, I can also say it's the cosine of x over the sine of x. So if I gave you a problem where um, I gave you the tangent and I wanted you to calculate the cotangent, you would use the, this reciprocal function. But if I gave you the problem where you had the cosine and the sine, well, you don't have to calculate the tangent first. You could just go ahead and calculate the cotangent. So both of these formulas are handy depending on the information that you have. Alright, so since we know that the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, um, we can just go ahead and fill in that chart for the pi over 4's. So 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, 1 and negative 1. Okay. Um, and then on your own you can go ahead and do pi over 6 and pi over 
three. Um, let's do let's do zero first. Let's do that. So let's calculate the tangent of arc length to zero. So that's going to be the sine of zero over the cosine of zero. The sine of zero is zero. And the cosine of zero is one. Zero divided by one is zero. So there, uh, there we go. The tangent of zero is going to be zero. Now let's skip down to the pi over two. Well, here, notice the sine and cosine are switched. And so I would have uh, one over zero. You know you can't divide by zero. So we say the tangent of pi over two is undefined make a big U there. Let's skip down to pi. There's zero divided by negative one. Zero divided by anything is zero. And let's skip down to three pi over two. So here we're dividing by zero. Can't do that. That's undefined. And of course when you get back to two pi that's the same as zero. Alright, so now using the reciprocal relationship, let's go ahead and do the cos the cotangent. So if the tangent is zero, that must mean that zero was in the numerator. So the cotangent then, zero is in the denominator. That's undefined. So skip down to pi over two. If the tangent is undefined, the cotangent is zero because zero is in the numerator. And skip down to pi, that's going to be undefined. Skip down to three pi over two, that's going to be zero. 2 pi is going to be undefined. And again, you can do the pi over 6's and the pi over 3's. Alright, let's do the secant a minute, and let me erase some stuff here. Eraser. It takes a little time, but it doesn't leave any smudges on the paper. It's kind of nice. Let's do the secant. So the secant of an arc is defined as the reciprocal, or 1 over the cosine. So let's do an example here, and let's do uh, the pi over 6. So we want the secant of pi over 6, and so that's going to be 1 over the cosine of pi over 6. So 1 over the cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. Alright, we're not going to pull out our calculators. We're going to use our knowledge of fractions to do this. So let me pull up a separate piece of paper here and show you how to divide by fractions. Alright, so let me just take a different example here a minute. So if I've got 3 over 5 divide by 2 over 7. The way you do that is you take your numerator fraction and then you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So then you just multiply straight across. 3 times 7 is 21 and 5 times 2 is 10. So when you divide by fractions, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Let's go back to this one. I just have a 1 up here. That's fine. You can just make that be 1 over 1. And I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal is 2 over the square root of 3. So then I've got 2 over the square root of 3. We cannot have radicals in the denominator, so you have to rationalize the denominator. You're going to do that by multiplying by square root of 3 over square root of 3. Multiply straight across, so you get 2 times the square root of 3 all over 3. So let's see, that was secant pi over 6, so that goes right here. 2 times the square root of 3 all over 3. And I'll let you use symmetry to fill in the other the other um, quadrants that you can do on your own. And now let's do the cosecant. And you're probably already noticing some patterns here. If the secant is 1 over the cosine, well, then the cosine.
secant is probably going to be 1 over the sine of the other curve. So the cosecant of an arc, by definition, is the reciprocal of the sine, or 1 over. And let's do um, the pi over 6 for this one, too. So the cosecant of pi over 6 is equal to 1 over the sine of pi over 6. So that's 1 over, and sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So I take the 1 over 1, I can make a fraction out of that, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, and then you end up with 2. So the cosecant of pi over 6 is 2. Now, you can use um, you can use your knowledge of the quadrants to fill that one in too, but I want to show you something here that's kind of a cool little trick, because where the sine is uh, one half at pi over six, that means the cosine is square root of three over two. And then by symmetry, you know that at, at pi over three, those two switch places. So therefore the secant at pi over three is two, and the cosecant at pi over 3 is 2 times the square root of 3 over 3 because they switch places. Um, so once you have that filled in, then you can go ahead and fill in the rest of your quadrants. And I think that just leaves a few of them left for you to fill in on your own. So this is the end of this lesson.